Hello, my name is Carlos and I'm going to uh, do a bark inversion on this Catalina seedling. Why am I going to do the bark inversion? I have read and seen some videos in which people do bark inversions uh, on avocado and other fruit trees in order to accelerate the fruiting and the flowering process. I have a particular interest on this Catalina seedling. It is a two-year-old seedling. It's growing very well. The leaves are taking the characteristics of the parent tree, which is rare on a Catalina seedling, but I also think it's showing a lot of Guatemalan characteristics. There are some Guatemalan trees, like the Queen Avocado, that have big brown leaves. This is taking a lot of the characteristics. I do know that the Catalina tree has rounder almond-shaped leaves, but these leaves are different than the parent tree, which is right to my right here. Uh, this Catalina tree, where this seed came from, is right next to a. It's right next to a Monroe tree, which I believe also has a Guatemalan lineage. So I hope that maybe something happened between these two trees, and we have seedling here that may have potential. Uh, if it doesn't have potential for anything new, at least we'll be able to document whether or not we can accelerate the fruiting and flowering of a tree by bark inversion. Also, this tree, I did some girding uh, about six months ago. So let's see if between the girding and the in bark inversion now, we can do something to accelerate the, the process. It's going to be a long process. It's going to take a couple of years or more for me to find out whether this works or not. It's now October 28th. Uh, in about four, five, six months, next year, spring, I will put this on the ground. Hopefully it will be a lot bigger and it survived the park inversion. And then we'll monitor the tree uh, to see how it does for the next few years to see if we can get it to a maybe flower in, uh, for in, in the next 24 months. It would be nice if it does that. Now let me show you what I did and how I did the park inversion. We already get, did the girding right here below about six months ago and it has healed and the tree is doing well. Now we're going to come to this area and we're going to cut two rings, two rings of the bark and then we are going to invert it. So we have now cut two rings around the bark about an inch wide and we are going to make a vertical cut to try to separate the bark. It comes in handy to have this bark separating tool that some of these knives come with. So we'll... Okay, there we go. It's almost full moon, only hours away, so it may be help. It may be helping. Okay, there we go. There we go. Here's the bark. Here's the bark. We're going to make sure I already inverted it, and we're going to clean this up real well. And we're going to scrape some of the inside here. And now we are going to uh, put the bark back. Make sure it fits real well, and I think it does fit real well, and we're just going to tape it. There is an opening here, I guess, which has to do with the way the cone shape of the, uh, of the trunk. Now we are going to very windy today. We're just going to make sure we uh, wrap this real tight, as tight as we can. As tight as we can. There we are. 